Today I'll be showing you how to make a simple Android WebView app that lets you control the Pi garage door opener that I showed you how to build in the last video. Let's get started. First of all, we need to download the software that lets us make Android apps, which is Android Studio. To download this, search up Android Studio for whatever distribution you're running, like Windows, Mac OS, or in my case, Linux. Then go to the first link that pops up. Click Download. Once your download is finished, extract the files into a directory. In Linux, to start Android Studio for the first time, open your terminal. Then type cd whatever directory your Android Studio is located in. For me, it's Android. Then type cd android-studio. After this, type cd bin. Then to run Android Studio for the first time, type dot slash studio dot sh. The Android Studio window should open. Go through the default configuration options. Android Studio will download some additional files it needs to run. Once this is done, click Finish, and you'll be greeted with a window that lets you start your first project. Now to open your first Android Studio project, click Start a new Android Studio project. Then tap on Empty Activity. Tell your application Garage Door Controller. And enter your save directory. Then enter what your minimum API for running it on is. I'm keeping it at Jelly Bean. Finally, click Finish and your new Android Studio project will open up. When you first open Android Studio, you'll see your first main activity file. This file executes whenever you're um, app runs. So this file contains your first imports and then your main activity class. Under there you have all your functions. Our first function calls the activity main XML file. This file is pretty much your layout for your app. It's your user interface that whoever is using your app will see. So in the activity main XML file you can see that there's a text view element here. This element pretty much just shows the text that you've entered earlier to the user. It's constrained on all four sides so that it can adapt to different screen sizes. Now, if you go in here and you right click, you can go to the XML file. Here, you can change all the different settings of your text view, like what it says and other things like where it's constrained. Now that we have looked at our main activity files, we can run our app for the first time to see how it looks. To do this, you can either use a virtual device or you can use your actual phone. I'm going to be using my actual phone. First, you need to enable developer mode. To do this, go into settings, then go into about phone. Click on software options, and then tap on build number five times. It'll prompt you to enable developer mode. Then scroll down to USB debugging and click the slider so that it's on. Now that your phone's configured, plug it into your computer using a USB cable. Then you should see it pop up in the Devices menu of your Android Studio. Now, to finally run the app, click the Play button. It'll transfer the app to your phone and it'll open automatically. Now that we have run the default app, we can begin modifying it. So go into your Android Studio, and then drag in the button from the left-hand panel. After you drag it in, we can constrain it. So drag up from this circle thing at the top, all the way to the top of your screen. And then drag down until it touches the top of the text view so it doesn't go over the text view whenever you're actually running the app. Then drag to both sides. 
Now you've constrained your bump. Now that you've constrained it, we can begin changing some of its attributes. So click on the button and then click on this attributes thing. Then it'll open up this menu. Here we can change the text of our button and its description along with some other appearance things and what it does when we click it. Now you can modify your button's text by going to this text place right here and replacing it with something else. It should also change on the button, but when you do that, it gives you a warning to not hard code that string. So to make this a dynamic variable, we can go into another file, go to res, values, and then strings.xml. Here you can create a new string. So copy this string up here, which is the name of your app. and paste it right underneath. Then you can edit what the name of this string is. I'll name it button text. And then you can edit what your button needs to say. Now, save this and go back to your activity main.xml. Reselect your button and go back to the text. Now click on button.text when it appears. Now it should show what you just wrote. Now that you've changed the text of your button, you can do the same thing for your text. So go into strings.xml and add another string. Here, you can edit it and click text under, text under button. Now go back to your activityman.xml and then edit the text Now that you've made the user interface for your first main activity, we can edit the main activity.kt file so it will call so the button will call our next activity. To do this, add the following lines under your existing function. Now, it will encounter some errors, but to fix these, press Alt Enter. After this, you should have these imports in your file. Now, we can create the next activity that will be called by the button. To do this, right click on the app folder, then click New and then activity, then go to empty activity. As the name of the activity, write garage open activity. Then click finish. Doing this will create two new files the garage open activity.kt file, which is where all your code is, and the activity garage open.xml file, which contains your UI and the rest of your styling. Now we can modify our button so that it calls this new activity. Go back to the activity main.xml file. There, go to your button and on the on click function, Click this drop down menu, then click on open garage. Now when your button is clicked, it'll launch the open garage activity. Now we're going to add a web view element to the activity garage open.xml file. This will allow it to access our web server where our garage door can be opened and closed. To do this, we go back to the garage activity garage open.xml file. 
Then click on widgets in the left sidebar and click on web view. Drag this into your screen. It'll fill up the entire page. So now we need to add an import so that we can use our web view element. So type import android.webkit.webview. This will import your web view element. Now that we've imported the web view element, we need to add it to our function. To do this, add the lines shown on screen. Now, to finally call our web view and tell it to visit the URL of our web server, add this following line. Now, to allow clear text HTTP traffic, we have to add one line to the Android manifest file. So, open up your Android manifest.xml file, then add the line shown on screen. This will allow HTTP clear text traffic. Now that we've added the web view element, you can go ahead and check if it works. So click the play button and then check your phone. The app should automatically open. Then click on the open garage button. It should open up your garage web server where you can enter your password and open your garage. Now that you've confirmed that opening the garage from the app works, we're ready to add the sensor page. So drag in another button from the side and place it in the middle. Then constrain it to both sides. Then constrain it to the bottom of the text view element. Finally, constrain it to the bottom and drag it into place where you want it to be. To change the button text, we can add an entry in the strings.xml file. So go to res, values, and strings.xml. Then copy an entry. And change the text. <coughs> I'll be changing the name to sensor button text. and changing the button text to check garage. Now we can add another text view element that tells the user what the button does. So go to the left sidebar, click text and drag in the text view. Constrain it to both sides. and then constrain it to the bottom of the check garage button. Finally, constrain it to the bottom. Then drag it into place. Now go back to strings.xml and copy another line. Then paste it right underneath. Now change the name to something else. I'm going to have the text as check if the garage door is open or closed. Now go back to your activity main.xml file and click on the text view. Then go to the text, <coughs> go to the text place. Click backspace and enter your name. Now your text view is working. Now we need to create the sensor activity. So right click on the app folder 
then click new and go down to activity then click empty activity enter the name as check sensor now add the line shown on screen to the check sensor.kt file Then go over to the activity check sensor.xml file. Click to the graphic and then go to widgets and then web view. Drag that in. It should fill the entire screen. Now add the following web view import line to import web view. Now add the following lines to the mainactivity.kt file to define the check sensor function. Now we need to add the onClick attribute to the button in the activity main.xml file. So go back to the activity main.xml file and click on the check garage button. Then on the onClick attribute, click the drop down menu. Here you should see check sensor. Click on that. Now when the button is pressed, it'll run the check sensor function. Now go up and click on the play button and it should install this app to your phone. Open it and make sure both the open garage and view sensor buttons work. You should be able to view whether your garage is open or closed and open or close it from the web page. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below.